Starting headlines, we go to theguardian.com. Soldiers fell to their deaths as India and China's troops fought with rocks. India shocked by Himalayan border clash in which unarmed troops fought in the dark. And you go, well, you know, I mean, having been in the Marines, you know, and, and been in combat, you know, uh, you know I, I can imagine you might have troop movements where there's unarmed troops. Like, I, I think this would be more likely to happen with like a group of Marines stationed on an army base, right? That an unarmed fight happens in a military, but then no, people die. Like this is like an inherently confusing story where you go, Oh, they were fighting with, they were unarmed. It couldn't have been serious. And and that's, what's interesting about this is it wasn't, there was no serious like planned attack and they just, Oh, we left our guns at home, but we successfully found an enemy unit that was also unarmed. So we went ahead with our plan and went in with no. Okay. So, the hand-to-hand -hand combat lasted hours on steep, jagged terrain with iron bars, rocks, and fists. Neither side carried guns. Most of the soldiers killed in the worst fighting between India and China in 60 years lost their footings or were knocked from the narrow Himalayan ridge, plunging to their deaths. India has reacted with shock and caution to the loss of at least 20 soldiers. On its, uh, wars are started over less body, lower body counts than that. Uh, on its disputed border with China, with images of the Chinese president, Xi Jinping, burned in Indian cities. In his worst public comments on the dispute, Prime Minister Narendra Modi led a two-minute silence for the killed soldiers and said India would defend every stone, every inch of its territory. I would like, quote, I would like to assure the nation that the sacrifice of our Jawans, which is their term for troops, will not be in vain. For us, the unity and sovereignty of the country is the most important. A day after reports of the violent face-off in the Western Himalayas emerged, Indian news outlets began naming some of the dead, and a clear picture started to build of what transpired on the Monday night on the high, steep ridge lines above the fast-flowing Galwan River. The killings were sparked when a patrol of Indian soldiers encountered Chinese troops in a steep section of the mountainous region they believed the People's Liberation Army, PLA, had retreated from in line with a 6 June disengagement agreement. The Indian government has alleged that what followed was a premeditated ambush on their troops by PLA forces. And you go, the People's Liberation Army planned this but forgot to bring guns? The two armies jostled and hand-to-hand -hand fighting broke out, neither side armed in line with decades of tradition, supposed to ward off the possibility of escalation between the nuclear-armed neighbors. Then, an Indian commanding officer was pushed from the narrow ridge and fell to his death in the gorge below. Reinforcements from the Indian side were summoned from a post about two miles away, and eventually about 600 men, 600 men, were fighting with stones, iron rods, and other makeshift weapons in near total darkness for up to six hours, Indian government sources said, with most of the deaths on both sides occurring from soldiers falling or being knocked from mountain terrain. I assume there were some blunt force trauma to the head deaths as well. But here's, here's the crazy thing. We still live in a world where a government as big and as credible as India's has someone in charge of 600 troops and sends them into this fight. At least four more Indian soldiers were said to be in critical condition. Indian media outlets cited intelligence sources claiming up to 50 Chinese soldiers may have been killed in the melee but did not present the evidence. Chinese CCTV's widely watched evening news broadcast made no mention of the border confrontation. On Tuesday, following a phone call on Wednesday night between India's Minister for External Affairs, Subramanian Jishankar, and the Chinese Foreign Minister, Wang Yi, the two sides issued statements agreeing to de-escalation and resolving the conflict in a responsible manner. Now, here's another fun reaction to this with our next headline from the U.S. Sun. Bear fight. Indians use Winnie the Pooh 
to taunt lookalike President Xi over border clashes after China banned the cartoon bear. Indians have used Winnie the Pooh to taunt lookalike President Xi Jinping over the border clashes after China banned the cartoon bear. Fears of a war between the two nations have escalated as a result of the story we just brought you, obviously. India and China have been feuding over the disputed Aksai Chin border since the two countries last fought a war in 1962. And this week's violence saw the first fatalities since 1975. There's some, uh, some good historical context. A little more detail from this story. Bats spiked with nails and wrapped in barbed wire were reportedly used with one Indian official describing the Chinese force as a death squad. Now, were either of the forces opposed in this battle practicing social distancing? I don't think so. No, of course, uh, the corona. I'm sorry, the virus, which shall not be named, which was named after a beer, so we don't get censored on YouTube, uh, narrative has long since been discredited. Uh, Indians have already taken to the streets to burn posters of President Xi, but they have now used Winnie the Pooh to poke Beijing. So where did this come from? Mentions of the cartoon bear with the love for honey are reportedly blocked on Chinese social networks amid comparisons with President Xi. The Chinese government considers comparisons as a serious attempt to undermine the presidential office and Xi himself. President Xi and then U.S. President Barack Obama were compared to Winnie the Pooh, sauntering next to Pal Tigger in 2013. If a person sends the picture of Xi and Obama next to Pooh and Tigger in a WeChat group, others in the group chat will not see that picture. Results are not displayed. So this is one of the things that came out of, uh, or, or, or to, to real prominence, in the Hong Kong protests recently, or, or over the last year, I suppose, that uh, the Kung Flu conveniently kicked out of relevance and the uh, lampooning of Xi Jinping with, uh, you know, Winnie the Pooh like this. You know, what do, we, what do we do to make fun of, of Trump in the United States? We have floats of him as a baby. Like they did that in England, too. The repression in China is real. And, you know, I, I don't want to turn this into like a rant about freedom of speech and peace because, yeah, I mean, I could, right? They are intrinsically connected. But like Voltaire said, right, those who can get you to believe absurdities can get you to commit atrocities. And when you are so restrained in speaking out that the way you make fun of your president you don't. You know, there's no public criticism in China like this. In the, the, what we have in the United States, it is something to celebrate and, and to, to to note that whether you want to give the American government credit for not being as vicious as the Chinese government or the American people for asserting our rights, or people all around the world who do this, but if uh, if if you don't have freedom of speech, you might find yourself on a cliff, falling to your death after a fist fight with stones and rocks and rebar and baseball bats wrapped in barbed wire like a barbarian.